What's up? I'm Hutch, and you need to understand PNF techniques so that you can better treat your patients and also pass the NPTE. I've already talked about what PNF is, its goals, and layers of facilitation. Otherwise, this is just going to be a review on the various techniques of PNF. These techniques are basically ways to add or remove resistance and utilize some of those layers of facilitation to accomplish your goals of mobility, stability, controlled mobility, or skill, or a combination of all of those. So a lot of these can be applied to something isolated like knee or elbow extension, or can be used with those rotational and crossbody D1, D2 patterns or can be applied to functional movements like rolling over in bed or something a little bit more sports specific like ball handling in basketball or kicking a soccer ball. I'm going to start with some of the techniques that have a little bit of carryover or review from those layers of facilitation. The first one is normal timing. So the goal here is to move distal segments first and then progress to proximal segments, which is a more natural way to move. Joint distraction. This is a consistent manual traction, which can be combined with some type of mobilization or with a quick stretch to help improve initiation and range of motion. Timing for emphasis. The basic idea of this is the same as ear radiation. So you're going to provide an isometric or isotonic resistance to allow that ear radiation or overflow to strengthen weaker muscles that may not be able to activate on their own if targeted directly. Rhythmic rotation is slow passive rotation about the longitudinal axis of a joint and can help improve range of motion. Repeated contractions is when you use those repeated stretches. So you have them move throughout a range of motion. They're trying to contract the whole time, but they don't have the strength to get through that whole range of motion. So whenever they get stuck, you're going to do a quick stretch and help them reactivate that muscle. Contract relax. This is when you're trying to stretch a muscle. You'll move them to the point of resistance, have them contract the antagonist for eight to 10 seconds isometrically, and then move them further into that stretch when they relax. Hold relax is again, trying to stretch a muscle. You move them to that point of resistance. Here you're going to have them contract everything as hard as they can for 8 to 10 seconds. Then they relax and you move them further into that stretch. Hold, relax, active movement. This is for really weak muscles like a 0 or a 1 out of 5 with your manual muscle testing. You're going to move that muscle into its shortened position and have them isometrically contract. Once they relax, you'll do a quick stretch to have them move into a lengthened position for that muscle and then try to actively shorten it. Agonistic reversals is when you're moving throughout a full range of motion back and forth, but working on contracting the same muscle. So you resist it concentrically, then you resist it eccentrically back and forth, trying to get that movement smooth. This is different than a slow reversal, which is moving through that same range of motion. But this time in one direction, you're going to be resisting the agonist and in the other, you'll resist the antagonist. So you're working both muscles. A slow reversal hold is when you do that same thing on either side at the end of the range of motion, you'll provide isometric resistance and have them hold against you for a few seconds. Alternating isometrics is when they are holding a joint in place and you provide resistance to one side and then the other without a break in between. This is different than rhythmic stabilization, which again, you're holding a joint in place. You're providing that isometric resistance to them, but this time instead of just one side, then the other, this is multi-directional and progressive. Rhythmic initiation is where you start by moving them passively throughout a range of motion, progressing to active assist, then resisted range of motion. And this may just be one direction and then you can just reset them passively, but you want to try to get the rhythm going so that there's a little bit more of that normal timing element. And finally, we have resisted progression, which is specifically for gait, resisting a joint such as your hip to activate those muscles to improve rotation or advancement or things like that. Now it's time for NPT Jeopardy. Pause the video now if you want time to read and think about the question. Otherwise, you've got five Four, three, two, one. Remember, this is different than agonistic reversals, which only looks at the agonist muscle, contracting concentrically then eccentrically throughout a range of motion. With slow reversals, you'll provide resistance to the agonist in one direction and the antagonist in the other direction. Hopefully that covers all of our bases. If not, feel free to check out the description box below for a link to my notes on Etsy. Otherwise, comment with questions or suggestions for videos I should do in the future. Good luck studying. Go change the world.